Well, to get a, get a better insight on the Israeli protests, we're joined by Mr. Ralf Schoenman. He's a political commentator joining us uh, from Berkeley. Sir, welcome to the program. First of all, uh, tell us, who are the organizers of these protests in Israel? These are organized protests by all sectors of the working population, students, workers, uh, people associated with the rank and file membership of the Histadrut, social organizations suffering from the enormous escalation of the cost of living, the uh, unavailability of affordable housing and food, the radically uh, in increasing uh, austerity measures that are affecting the Israeli population as they are peoples throughout the world, from Egypt to Oakland uh, and uh, from uh, uh, Cairo to uh, Manama. Mr. Shulman, tell us more about the basic demands of these protests and at whom are they directed at? The protests are clearly directed against this tiny oligarchy in the Israeli state that controls much of the financial and economic life of the country. It's analogous to the same type of movement that has uh, erupted in Egypt in the Tahrir Square and which infuses the passion of the occupation movement in hundreds of cities across the United States. And I would uh, like to emphasize that in Oakland, California, not far from where we live, uh, the demonstrators were confronted by the police who were using rubber bullets and canisters of toxic gas, and those are the same canisters and bullets that were used in Israel by the Israeli armed forces against Palestinians in village after village. They are made by defense tech. It's a specific canister that was uh, fired into a group of nonviolent protesters in Oakland struck the head of an Iraqi war veteran, a young man who's skull is fractured and who is in critical condition, that technology, those weapons that the Oakland police and the San Francisco police are using are used by the Israeli army against Palestinians in the West Bank, against Palestinians in Gaza, and against Palestinians inside the Green Line. It's a uniting element of the repressive forces of imperialism and Zionism that underlie the capitalist outrages against which people are protesting throughout the world, and tonight in particular, the police spokesman, Mickey Rosenfeld, acknowledged that 30,000 people mobilized in Tel Aviv. You can certainly multiply that figure between two and three to get to the accurate number, but it's a measure of the extent to which the mollifying efforts of the Netanyahu regime are having no impact on the population. The mobilization is intensifying and is renewed. Mr. Schoenman, back to the protests. Ultimately, what goals? are the organizers and the protests themselves trying to achieve? Well, they are attempting to achieve some modicum of economic justice, and increasingly they are finding that that is not an aspiration that can be realized as long as the Zionist state itself, its apparatus of repression and the economic underpinnings remain intact. As in the Zionist state, so in the Egyptian uh, 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 in, in, in Egypt's uh, reality, as in, uh, in the United States and in countries across the world, it's the structure of power that corporate capitalism entails that is responsible for the economic exploitation, the immiseration, the collapse of the financial system, and the open use of repression and torture and police brutality and governmental uh, attacks on unarmed people to sustain a system that, as I like to re uh, put it, is in terminal decay, a reality that is grasped by untold numbers of people every day. Uh, a new eruption of protest and opposition expresses itself and it comes to the realization that it is a systemic issue. It's not this politician or that particular prime minister, but the underlying economic and political order of which these spokespersons are but tools and agents. From Berkeley, Mr. Rolf Schoenman, political commentator, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us here on Press TV.